There's a bad moon out tonight, not there's a bathroom on the right. Who knew? Hi, I'm Jason Russell from Critical Dice, and welcome to the Fable 42, where we build community through friendship, gaming, and of course, chaos. You're watching the Duke City Chronicles, a Monster of the Week game set in my hometown of Albuquerque, New Mexico, because I had to change very little to this game to make it happen here. Uh, you can watch us live, just like today, at twitch.tv slash people42, Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern or 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, you also can catch us on replays on our YouTube, as well as the Duke City Chronicles podcast, uh, where all fine podcasts are. Um, if you're watching this, we're going to start our giveaway, a free set of dice from Critical Dice. Hey, that's me. Uh, use exclamation point critical to uh, do that. It'll be in the chat. Uh, if uh, you're watching us and you like what you see, uh, please uh, click like. And if you have a free subscription, if you have a free subscription from Amazon Prime, go ahead and use it here. You can do it anywhere, but we sure would like it if you did it here. Um, with that, let's go ahead and uh, do our uh, player character intros, as is customary. Bridget, let's start with you. Hi guys, I'm Bridget. Uh, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram at string underscore theories underscore. Um, and I play Suki Buchanan. She is a tattooed 70-year-old art professor at the University of New Mexico, and she talks back to the dead for a living. Perfectly done. Perfectly done. And stacks with his, like, galaxy water cup there. Uh, why don't you go next? <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Stax, also known as the Judgy DM on all the socials. Um, and I play Gates, uh, also known as the True GW. Uh, <laughs> from the monstrous playbook and <laughs> i can't even say it's a true face uh but yeah he's a med student and he's kind of sort of in this to the end pretty much <laughs> well said not ominous at all <laughs> and, and let's go to you What's up, fam? my name is Anne. you can find me on dusty wings illustration on the gram otherwise my um own twitch channel mc dusty uh, I play Fiona from the Spell Slinger playbook, and she's your just average redheaded, you know, demon lady. <laughs> just average. And GW. Hey, everyone. I'm GW, the real GW. <laughs> you can find me on IGN Twitter under GW005, two Bs, two zeros. Uh, you can also find me here uh, on uh, Friday afternoons on Duke City Chronicles and Monday on Anne's show, which is Crypt Creatures, a horror-themed um, campaign. Um, and here I am Quavon Whispers. I am the Divine Playbook and the team's angsty, edgy angel play. Yes. Yeah, if you haven't gotten enough spooky from this, please check out Crypt Creatures. It's, uh, it's pretty great. And I'm Jason Russell. You can find me at Critical Dice on Instagram and Heaven Help Us TikTok. And uh, I think we don't have any real announcements. Uh, we are in our final episode with multiple parts uh, called The Trestle. And uh, as I was telling the uh, team before we started recording, that this is kind of one extended preparatory kind of a parlor room scene of figuring out the plan of attack. And uh, we will see how that goes. I'll give a recap here in a second. But first, let's do our intro as we start our next section of this episode, The Trestle. It's an amazing place. Most people have no idea where it is, but we're okay with that. We've got mountains, rivers, deserts, and over 300 days of sunshine, and some of the most diverse and wonderful people you'll ever meet. It's a great place to live, and I definitely encourage you to try it. But we also have our dark side, our own ghosts, secrets, and legends. Most of them are true. For thousands of years, people have been living here and dying here. This is Albuquerque, but it goes by many names. The 505, the Burke, my favorite is the Duke City. These are the Duke City Chronicles. Creep. 
Previously on the Duke City Chronicles, the team was confronted by Ambrose, the head of the Obsidian Order, asking for Fiona to return with him now that she is back on this timeline, I guess. Uh, she said, well, I've got things to do here. He said, fine, let's talk about it to, uh, later today, noon, the frontier. The team goes back to Sunset House, gets some well-deserved sleep. They've been up for a very long time and uh, started marshalling their forces, getting Chet to start triangulating the location of the transmitters that the Shade is using, uh, a henchman of our BBEG Maxwell. Uh, and uh, started calling up some other NPCs that could help them, uh, like Eddie. Uh, and then GW decided to go see if he couldn't find Doris Payne, a mm, sorceress slash thief that they encountered a long time ago. Found her in Atlanta, and she's like 90 years old because when uh, they all got teleported to the past, she got dropped off in the 70s and has just lived her life since then. Um and uh, has an ankle bracelet on her as she's watching uh, uh, TV, and uh, and uh, he kind of got some more information from her, asked her if she wanted to come with him to help. She said, that part of my life is behind me. He said, I understand, grabbed her hand to shake it, and then joking slash not joking said, I teleport with her. GW, that's where we left it as a cliffhanger. Does Doris Payne come with you? Doris Payne comes with me. Without the ankle bracelet. Without the ankle bracelet. I made him roll that beforehand. <laughs> he got a 10. So the ankle bracelet stays in Atlanta. And you're coming back to the living to the uh kitchen, the dining room kitchen area of Sunset House. I am. Yeah. Um, a few minutes after uh Q leaves, you guys hear have a see a flash out of your peripheral, peripheral vision of that golden divine energy and standing there next to the stove in the uh, dining room is Q and a old old woman kind of wearing like uh just comfortable like lounging around the house clothes looking very disoriented and she starts slapping Q on the on the arm where she's still hey, kind hey. of holding her hand like, well, I told you hey, not to. Hey, 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 relax, relax, relax. And I, I'll, I'll look over at the team and I'll look back. Doris, we need you. So all y'all got back okay then, I guess. For the most part. Who, who are these? And she's pointing to... St uh, to uh, Gates and Fiona. Fiona's catching her breath because she's a little startled. Because <laughs> every time he does that, she's like, <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." It's like, I, I know you. You, 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 Suki, right? Yes, ma'am. Q, who's your friend? Um, this. Is Doris Payne, Suki? Our door, uh, our Doris Payne. It turns out that, baby, there's only one of me. It turns out that she got <laughs> kind of stuck in the past. She she hitched a ride, you could say, but she had to come back the the time way. You look oh, like she oh sits down. God. She's like. I took the long way around, the normal way. Looks like you guys found a different way of doing that. We did. We did. Oh gosh. I'm uh can I get you something to drink? Uh or anything? You got Dr. Pepper, I'll take it. I I bet oh, I do. You mm. cannot just be pulling people out of nowhere, you know? <laughs> like I... what? She's like, mm hmm. She's like crossing her legs and like sitting on the uh, sitting on a chair, like just like, mm hmm. Tell him, you tell him, you can do it. And, 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 I, and I look at Suki, Suki, we need all the help we can get with this. Yes, but I, I, I don't, I, I'm sure, you know, you're, I, I've seen her talent. She's 90 years old, Q. Q, we are about to go up against a monster and she is 90 years old, Q. Well, we, I left the, the ankle bracelet house arrest thing back at her place. So I think at least we're fine there. Ankle bracelet? You had an ankle bracelet? 
Well, listen, and we all made mistakes and I'm not as quick as I used to be. Got caught stealing from a Walmart. But yeah, I, 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 I'm retired. Not doing much of the magic stuff no more. And just thieving in general. But uh, his destinies hold me into this shenanigans. I, so I guess so. A criminal? What was that? Sam? Yeah. Oh, we've kidnapped a criminal. Oh. <laughs> we out criminal the criminal yet again. Yeah. Um, I, I thought, well, it's not the worst thing they've ever done. Oh, who are you, dear? Fiona. Fiona. And very nice to me. She goes to shake your hand. And right before she touches, she's like, whoa. Oh. My. You uh, you got something going on. Yes. What? I'm part demon. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would explain the. Mm. Mm-hmm. You ever been inside a ring? Have I? No. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, interesting. What about? What's your deal? You got nothing. What, what, there's nothing going on here. What, what's what's your, what? Are you, what are you doing? Uh, I, I'm Gates and Charmed. She sticks her hands out. And takes it and holds like a little bit too long, just like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, ma'am, why why are you here aside from uh? She kind of looks over. At you. Yeah, she lets go of your hand, folds them in her lap, and just looks at you. And in the in the meantime, uh, I'm kind of squinting my eyes. I'm looking from her to Fiona to her to Fiona because. There was definitely something there when she brought up the ring. I was like, and I I look back at him. <laughs> People are scared of demons. I mean, well, no, Doris, you said that explains it when you brought up the ring. Oh no 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 no! See, there I, there's some magic, hoodoo vibes off of her, and. When she explains she is part demon, that would explain kind of the stuff I'm seeing. Uh, uh, like she's clearly magical. Like, yeah, looks around like, yeah, she's probably the most magical thing in here. But there's some weirdness. But she's half demon. That would probably explain a lot of that. But uh, uh, speaking of magic, the reason why <sighs> you forcefully took me from my home. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take you back safely and mm-hmm. think of it as a, a vacation away from your house. Oh, uh, oh, good. What I had time to pack for and bring my sunscreen. That we did. We... I, I assume this is Albuquerque. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. So we... long as I'm here, what is it that you need? You are, you specialize in protection magics and mm-hmm. no a lot of ways to kind of uh, keep the status quo in a certain place. I I think you could help us at least keep this base of uh, this headquarters here at Siki's Place safe as a safe haven while we kind of split up and do what we have to do to try to take down Maxwell. Because I'm assuming, possibly, that Maxwell, since he is one who can tweak, alter time and probability and see certain things in the future, that he might see this coming and he might be doing his own planning to hit different areas too. Well, I'll say this, that uh, that boy has some seriously freaky mojo, weird stuff on him when I met him all those years. Well, you know what I'm saying. Uh, Not like her, even weirder than that. And yeah, some reality stuff, fate stuff. I don't think he could uh, see the future, though. Well, that's good to know. 
we have an idea of how to cut his power supply. Hmm. How exactly is that? I look to the team. I look to my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I'm see just like, like we do take... have a plan. We have <laughs> definitely discussed that plan. Yeah. So <laughs> to my recollection, we talked about how there is there's a power, focus, and intent. So the power are the ley lines. Mm -hmm. The focus is the kind of crazy fast processing brain of the AI intelligence Avi. And then the intent right. is the caster himself, in this case, Maxwell. Mm -hmm. And I think all that we really talked about was is if you disrupt one of those kind of like points of the triangle, this whatever he's about to do isn't going to work. Now, I don't know if you guys had settled on which way to go, but I remember Gates saying that if he gets a chance, he's going to grab Avi and just sink into the core of the earth or something um, to get him out of the equation. Uh and that you guys seem to be leaning towards less direct confrontation and more sabotage. And yes. you've got Chet trying to figure out where the transmitters are to maybe uh, either depower or at least hinder the shade uh, from being as effective as a first line of defense, as the the brute for this guy. Like leave him at least get leave him an opening so maybe if like he comes to get us or one of us we can attack him then <laughs> yeah uh and another thing that we had planned that we're still working through is um collecting just our friends some people that we've met along the way and if they're willing to help we can place them in certain areas to try to hit the main points at once I mean, that could work, so what do you want me to do? I ain't going in guns blazing on that psychopath. Um, is there a way besides you protecting the home? Because I don't want to put you in the way of danger at this point in your life either. Um, is there a way that may... besides protecting home base, is there a way that you might be able to cast something with uh, with Fiona that may be able to distract him so that he may not have a chance to react until it's too late. So you're looking for a distraction? Could help. Uh, Miss Suki, do you have any resources here books or anything like that oh sure uh what are you looking for anything in particular uh i'm looking for um jima morrency's uh guide to spooks and cryptic places and things of that nature and i think suki you would you we've established you have a in my, magical in my laboratory, spell library. <laughs> yeah. yeah which is the window seat in my parlor mm -hmm. my front parlor <laughs> yeah <laughs> um I definitely want to drink a cup of coffee there one day. Um, one day. Yeah. She's like, if you give me some time to do some research, maybe I could give you a, a delayed spell. Uh, what, like a concussion grenade? That could, uh, well, once you activate it, well, might knock him off his game for a few seconds. That sounds great. Yeah, I, I'll I'll go get that book for you right now, and I'll I'll go and <laughs> from the other room yeah. you hear thuds as yeah she's gonna like shuffle the, like flying. behind you and stuff, and you're able to give her the book, and she's gonna curl up at the in the window seat and kind of start reading and doing some research. Um, I'm gonna tuck her in with one of my quilts. Oh, thank Just you. Just kind of get her nice and comfy. Right. She's. <laughs> I feel bad that she got <laughs> interdimensionally mm -hmm. kidnapped. Yeah, also, Again. also also sensitive to the elderly. Like, um, yeah, I'm like, yeah, Fiona's will do very, it for Yeah, Fiona's grabbing like a tea table that she finds and puts it next to her, with, like a little, yeah. <laughs> wipes it down real quick. <laughs> yeah, she has like a like. I think she probably took a cup of tea from the table where you know Suki has like cookies and stuff out and stuff. And she's like, oh, sugar, would you warm this up for me? 
and I do. I take it. Yeah. I Microwave or badly. just like hold it and just. I was going to say, I was going to just. Yeah. Boop it. Mm -hmm. she's like mm. your own plate. Huh. spicy all right um uh chet kind of walks in about this time too and he's like got a map and like looks like like almost like that uh the ghost detector from ghostbusters and uh like a pencil in his mouth he's like all right so okay so i figured some stuff out and hey who's that who's that back there a friend doris Payne. you can you can talk about her Okay, cool. Like spooky friend? Yep. Spooky friend. Okay, cool. All right. So they go to triangulate, and there's two different places for uh signal re re repeaters from where uh you know we kind of like honed down like where the home base is. Is so so like one of them is up on uh the Sandia Crest on the mountain. Uh like probably I, I think it's backpacking on off of a signal of, of an FM station up there. And then there's another one on Nine Mile Hill, uh on, on, on the West Town, uh, which is uh pretty high up, but more like a just to kind of cover the west side uh kind of stuff. Uh they uh, he probably um Actually, it's not too far from where I had one of my repeaters. I, he, I don't think he's using the same gear, but uh, yeah, I, I, I figured out to like a, you know, a 15 meter like radius. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, I could probably find these things. Like, like uh, what, what do you want to do now that you know where they are? Well, I think we, thing. yeah, we start the sabotage. Good old fashioned, you know. Good old fashioned hellfire. Mm -hmm. Are we are we gonna use the C4? Oh yeah, we're gonna use the C4. Ooh. We've been saving it for just an occasion such as this. Yes, you were. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um it'll take me about an hour to get to either location. Like, do you like do you have a preference where I should start? And uh, when? How many are they? there's two and the, now i mean I, I have to understand too like these are repeaters so like there's still like the, the main hub at the place that uh, uh gates said he was at uh somewhere by the base uh so i mean if you in, so look at it this way if the shade is not at home base and i kill the repeater he's gonna be stuck wherever he is and have to get back into range the old-fashioned way like walk or get an uber or something right but <laughs> if um he's at home base and i take these things down then he'll only have powers uh because of the signal strength within a, a very small range of home base so you would be basically when we do this trapping him either away from base or trapping him at base so it really is uh you know, a question of like timing. Are we luring him away and then cutting off his signal, or are we doing things in town and like leaving him there where he can't like just show up all creepy shadows? Ah, stab, stab. You know. Hmm. I mean, uh, I kind of like the idea of stranding him out in the middle of nowhere uh, and having to have him walk home. Um. Yeah, yeah he's a jerk. I kind of like that one too. Yeah. Well, we. We said that we were going to be able to triangulate him, right? Well, I mean, triangulate like, 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 yeah, this is like Zach, like, like the 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 spooky, ooky, like shadow person now, I guess. Yeah. But like, so yeah, so like, I mean, I mean, you could even like pull into a confrontation, and then I could blow up the tower or or, or turn it off if if it's not safe to blow up, and then now you're just fading, seeing a really angry ex, you know, obsidian order operative, um, with a you know death grudge uh and he wouldn't have any powers and so you could you know defeat him or, or uh, whatever uh but um uh yeah so we can't try to get where he is we just use the signals from before to figure out like where the other transmitters were that's basically letting him cover the whole city so we don't know where he is uh right now i'm guessing i mean he like looks behind the door like not here i'm guessing yeah i don't i don't think he could get here without being noticed but um hmm i mean that's not a terrible idea if we want to go them out into the world or do we want to just keep them at the base what do y'all think you think the obsidian order knows where he is well i mean he looks at his watch he's like i mean you could 
yes keep going actually uh like um you, you could ask uh they might i oh, mean right. they uh because you're gonna meet with m- my boss right ambrose yeah uh yeah yeah i mean we should yeah he yeah. i mean he might have ways of tracking i mean he found you but it took him a while and they've been looking for zach for a while from what i understand so uh they didn't have a lot of luck so uh, uh, i don't know like that doesn't seem likely okay well we got to talk to ambrose first thing anyway so um thank you for finding the transmitters baby that's a huge yeah, yeah, help yeah. we'll definitely blow them up soon nor rather than later but i don't think ambrose is the kind of guy you keep waiting for very long okay so yeah. and uh did you contact anyone else like to come help us for all this stuff I'm glad you asked that. Um, I'm actually, I think I'm going to get you some help. A friend of mine, his name is Eddie. Oh, okay. Is he like coming here? Uh, I, are you going, are you going to be doing this anywhere else? Uh, no, going, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll prep here. Like he's coming here. Like he can just like, you know, come with me and we can like go to the location. And I mean, we perfect. Just... I take out my phone and I start texting Eddie. Yeah. Can I- can I cast like an extra protection spell for this house? Um, oh. Yeah, absolutely, you can. Um, yeah, covering Ed- my bases. <laughs> yeah, uh, Eddie already got contacted by Suki earlier and was okay. told to head towards uh, Sunset House. Awesome. And so I'm guessing you're saying, "Hey, when you get here, talk to Chet. You're going to be mm-hmm. his assistant, yes. and they will be a team together, which is great." I have fan fiction about this. Um, <laughs> that is not a joke. Um, Fiona... and, and in the and in the background, it's going to be like uh, a magical grandma looking over him, making sure that mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> like the second magic grandma in this second magic... <laughs> series. We got ghost grandma. We got spooky grandma. We got magic grandma. Um, we got thieving grandma. We got everything. Yeah, definitely All get kinds one of the... grandma. That's we get Gra- the, sh- the shiny ghost thing. grandma. Shiny um, ghost grandma. Uh, Fiona, uh, roll use magic, please. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. 13. 13, yeah. So I'm guessing you are barring a place from something? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, bar a place to a specific person or type of creature. Um, What do you want to bar it to? Oh, what type of creature is he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you well, could... have minions who can, like, help him. Yeah, I mean, you've seen the Shade employ homunculi before. Um, there's Zach. There's Maxwell himself. You could pick, uh, you know, you, you could tr- tr- do it like, okay, Maxwell can't come in, or uh, Zach can't come in, or homunculi can't come in, or you could say no one but the people who are already in this house can come in. I'll do that. <laughs> Oh, no. but wait, Eddie's oh, yes. not here yet. And Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> okay. And Eddie. I and said Eddie. what I said. <laughs> and, and any Uber Eats or DoorDash delivery yeah. drivers are allowed. Because you get a 13, I'll let you name the subjects uh, as exclusions. But no, basically no one can come in except Team C4 and the three, four uh, NPCs in question. Okay, got it. All right, so you guys are headed out to uh, uh, to meet with Ambrose at Frontier. Yep. Yes. All right. I'm time. gonna I'm gonna teleport into the the, f- the front uh, passenger seat. Of course you are. Um, <laughs> great. Um, for the sake of time, I'm gonna uh, unless you guys have something you guys want to talk about or other questions you have uh, during the journey, um, we can just pick it up right at Frontier. Uh, uh, I was going to pop into the back seat before Fiona and Miss Suki got in there. Just, like, mm-hmm. phase through the door or something. Yeah, just back there. <laughs> sit back. And I'll, like, whisper to Q, why are you so obsessed with Fiona? What do you mean? Like, every time, you know, demons or something gets brought up around her. We get it. She's a demon. But, like, why are you obsessing over her? You got something, like, mm-hmm. Uh, I I think I think you're looking too far into it, and I look out the window. Oh, okay, yeah, totally. Just just my observation. <laughs> <laughs> and as as you say that, I go and I knock on like where Q is sitting for him to roll down the window. Clunk clunk. Mm. Uh oh. Uh, I, <laughs> I I I roll it down. We're getting hey. onion rings on the way home. Okay. 
and I just yeah. get into the car door and I say, that is, that, I was, I, I was, was gonna that look a threat? I know. <laughs> I'm if we're and dying I, tomorrow, I'm getting my onion rings. So today we feast. Okay. <laughs> and and right before she gets into the back, like when she leaves the, the window, I just kind of look back at Gates. Onion rings. Onion rings. Gates, are you back there as all? my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite a Kool-Aid smile, but it's close. Um, all right, yeah. Seatbelts, and you guys drive about the 10 minutes it takes to get to Frontier. And um, as you guys enter, um, there is that familiar tingle. I think now everyone has been here now um, of... All of your powers shutting off as this is a null magic zone. Um, Gates, I think that shifting would be difficult here, but you can still feel the presence of Eubank um, because he's part of you. Um, and no. but like telepathy, teleporting, magic, summoning a you know a holy weapon, any of that is not going to work in this building. And uh, as you guys walk in, sitting in the very back booth off to the right-hand side, the east side of the restaurant, is Ambrose, the head of the Obsidian Order, the heir of Merlin, as he's called sometimes, uh, in his black suit, looking about 12 years old, black hair, very well coiffed, uh, and uh, drinking what appears to be a terrible cup of tea, and just very placidly just waiting for you all to arrive. Yeah, I go in and I have a seat in front of him and look at the rest of the team. Yeah, that is the same. So good of you to attend the meeting. Now, it appears that we have at an impasse, Ms. Malik. You are still employed by the Obsidian Order, but do you insist after your temporal jaunt to remain here and not return to the Order? Tell me why I should not resort to more extreme measures in returning you to your rightful place. Well, I think it's in everybody's best interest, including the Obsidian Order, that we do this job. And what is this job you've referred to a few times now? Well, I've encountered a creature that has a very, well... A huge amount of power, including the ability to manip manipulate the past. He's captured the fates. He's um, out of control. And I don't think he's going to stop until somebody stops him. Hmm. Captured the fates, you say? Yeah. I was aware that they were operating, well, manifesting in this vicinity. What sort of creature is he that he could stymie a fundamental force of the universe? Well, these three know more about Maxwell than I do. Miss Buchanan? Well, I think he's just a guy. <laughs> um, he's an incredibly intelligent guy, um, but I don't think there's anything particularly special or outstanding about him and i think that's what makes him so dangerous is you know he's the last person you ever expect but he hides a wicked intelligence and talent for you know manipulating matter and stuff but the fact of the matter is he's heartbroken and wants revenge on the world and there ain't nothing more dangerous than a heartbroken person with that much power. With that much power. If he truly is human, then how did he arrive at this power? With a few exceptions, if for a mere human to have power such as this, they must have learned, earned, or stolen it. Um. Stole it. Yeah. Stole it, How right? so, Miss Whis Mr. Whispers? I guess, oh. I guess it I guess it would be more considered borrowing, but he's using a number of things to 
actual power from the ley line itself. Hmm. It's interesting. The ley lines here have been erratic for some time. Yeah, they this have. could be the cause of his powers, or could be a reaction to his abilities. Do you intend to what separate him from his source? What is your track to quell this great evil, as you say, Miss Malik? Uh, well, as of now, we're going to try to cut off as much of the power source that we can um, before we confront him head on. Um, I think it's the only way to really do it successfully. But we're going to try to kick him as hard as we can and then kick him while he's down. Maybe distract him enough just so we have the chance to do that. Since he mm -hmm. does have a remarkable ability of knowing things before they happen. Yeah, and making things that didn't happen, happen. I will make you an offer, Miss Malik. In the interest of Let's just always say protecting my investment. I will offer you a boon that I believe may help, may further ensure your survival. On the condition, once this task is complete, your sojourn, your little vacation comes to an end and you return to operate under the auspices the obsidian order why do you want her so bad it's been years i look over at q want is not the correct verb mr whispers i believe the correct word is obligation the order has an obligation to keep the world of the dark the world of the scary the supernatural at bay destroying it where we can capturing or imprisoning it in other places as so the rest of the world may continue to spin and operate in the light as it has for these several millennia while miss malik is a much appreciated assets to our endeavors she also constitutes something that has been imprisoned against the world of the light and that is not a prison i want walking around willy-nilly on the face of the world of the light i reach over and i touch q on the shoulder it's a lot better this way. Of course, no. I'll come back. He bites his lip. He um, reaches into his jacket pocket and he pulls out what looks to be like like an old school like GPS device with a screen and about that size and puts it in the table in the middle. And he goes, do you recall the first time I encountered your little ragtag crew here. Yeah. We were cleaning up one of your messes. Hmm. Of that I'm very appreciative. Hmm. Though you have refused to be a, um, let's say we say, contractors for the Obsidian Order, you have enjoyed certain benefits from us from time to time, favors. I recall a certain phone call many years ago, but also our facilities, which I now understand are gone. However, you've also provided us with uh, quite a number of interesting opportunities. I was completely unaware of the properties of this place, this gaudy restaurant until at the occasion to visit 
Now, at first we thought the, this area, this place, this land would nullify magic. In fact, and he kind of looks off to his left and there's a little uh, old potbelly stove that you guys know inside is a built sometime in the 70s, a magical dampener that's keeping the spookiness in this building uh, checked. It's like, we took the liberty of analyzing its more interesting properties and we're able to devise this. And he kind of gestures to the device he just put on the table. If you activate this within a reasonable area, let's say three feet. Yes, a meter, that's about right. Of your quarry, it will shut down any magical effects in that radius. I can't guarantee for how long or its effectiveness with a uh, being of this caliber, of this sort of creation, but it may buy you some time. So you're saying if we get this, activate this thing a meter away from a person, that person in, in, any, in, in anything in radius. What's the radius? A meter. I see. And did uh, you similar say how long? Um, let's just say we've discovered that the more creatures in its effect area resist, the faster the battery drains. The more powerful, the less long. But it has helped us to capture rather than kill a variety of creatures these last few months. Noted. I look to Sookie and I look to Gates. Thanks. How do we activate it? Oh, just the button there on the side. And um, should turn on. Think of it as a monster bug zapper, if you will. And then I will kind of slide the box to uh, Fiona, since it is her boon. So, do we have an arrangement? We do. Excellent. I look forward to, tell, to hearing the story of your victory and seeing you at home once again soon. I'll be there, and I'll be there alive. Let's hope so. Hopefully. <laughs> Miss Pat, Mr. Whispers, Miss Buchanan, um, Gates. I was like, what's Gates' last name? Oh, yeah, it's Gates. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Gates. And he stands up, straightens his suit a little bit, and he walks out the back door. So the way this object works is when you activate it, you roll plus weird, and I'll let you know how it goes. But basically, you've got a mobile... Uh, anti-magic sphere. Who's the weirdest one here? <laughs> who, who has the highest weird? You? Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah. These two, yeah. Uh, Those two, yeah. Yeah, Fiona or Gates. And, like, like I mean, real talk, I don't know if Fiona should be holding... should be near this thing when it goes off. That <laughs> I, I'm just sitting here just like... Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> well, that that's the... I have a plus three to weird. Same. Yeah, same. Cool. Everybody's weird except Q. <laughs> Whatever, I'm Q's cool. Weird, the unweird, weird one. Yeah. You're weird in this group of weirdos. Whatever, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm the one cool guy. <laughs> your cool is how, what, how high is your cool, though, for real? <laughs> my, I think my cool is plus three. Okay, there we go. Oh, mine's right, mine's go. zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not cool at all. <laughs> Accurate. Yeah, my... my Mine's a zero as well. It used to be a minus one. Yeah. And then I got a plus one to cool. Yeah, oh, you're nice. like, why am I always the face of the operation? I have no clue. Why? Who he has charm. He has charm, though. Um, at, at, at the table, um, it's very obvious to Gates that Q was pissed off. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Q, or, or sorry, Gates. You can't take both way. his you names, can't. okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm taking all of them today. Um, <laughs> it probably would have been hard 
considering where they're at, but he would have been trying to like map overlay uh, Eubanks memories to see if there's like any reasoning why um, he would have been so generous i guess is the best word why ambrose was generous yeah why ambrose was um yeah roll your past lies move and then minus one minus one yeah so if you have like if whatever that move is like a plus two would be a plus one instead you know what i mean uh that's a six so you got a six you got like a seven then you took away one yeah Mm -hmm. yeah um you're it's having an area hard, yeah you're having a hard time in connecting the, the the reception's bad yeah yeah it almost feels like he's retreated a bit into more of like a unconscious part of your mind like he's hanging out in the subconscious where he used to like hunkered down against maybe the effect of this area what, what was, was that, that fiona I just imagine him like somewhere in the brain. Just mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's he's hiding out your childhood memories, like reading reading like the very hungry caterpillar. Yeah, oh, yes, I see. This metamorphopod is much like me. <laughs> <laughs> I too am hungry, hungry. <laughs> I wish to change into my final form. Wait, no. <laughs> um, werewolves. Um. Keep it what time? Of, it's like noon, right? Roughly. Yeah, it's like twelve thirty now. Yeah, werewolves. Suki, can you go ahead and what do we? What do we want to do? Do we want to mentally ping them, or do we want to you one of us or two of us to take a visit? Um, I think a mental ping first is a good idea, and then a visit. Um. They definitely didn't like when we totally rocked up on them, ate their chili, and then fought them in their kitchen. So their grandma, we... the grandma gave us the chili. It, she did. She did. Yes, but the, gra- the grandma was very nice. You're going the grandma go. was lovely, which is who I think I'm gonna ping. Um, because she's the only one that didn't try to kill us. Side, you know, on site, yes. Yeah, on site. I, I was like, unless she did something to the chili. That pause says she did something to the chili um but yeah no i'll i'll give i'll give the grandma hernandez yeah grandma hernandez yeah grandma hernandez a little okay not in this room not in this place you're not not in here yeah yeah so (laughs) after the car car. okay yeah yeah so ring ring give me a plus weird yeah okay while she's doing that before getting into the car um can I make a stop at Sonny's? I know y'all don't want Ambrose and Sonny working together, but end of the world, them two getting along for like 12 minutes. Mm, I think they can fucking suck it up. Fair. I, I also think that that is the argument that we should use. Because like... <laughs> I like I I cannot deal with outside conflict while we're in the middle of a literal world ending conflict. Everybody just got to like put on their big kid pants and like let's all save the world and then we'll talk about it later. Yeah, time to put on your big boy apron and let's get this done, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess Ambrose literally has big boy pants because he's 12, <laughs> but like, you know, <laughs> we'll get somebody to put on his big boy t-shirt or something. Yeah, how long have you been 12? A really long time. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you're reaching out to, yeah, roll plus weird to reach out to, uh, Grandma Her- Hernandez. 14. Uh, 14, yeah. Uh, you feel the connection, and she's there, but, like, it feels guarded. Uh, hi. How y'all doing? Who's this? Oh, uh, this is Suki Buchanan. I, I'm not sure if you'll remember me or if you'll, you know, remember me and be mad about it. You were here at the house a couple months ago when I was making chili. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, Yeah, we didn't get off on the right foot at all. And that is entirely our fault. Um, However, we do have a, a bit of a problem that I think interests all of 
a sort of um, weird folk of Albuquerque, and we were wondering if we could possibly have a moment of your time to uh, speak about it. What did you say your name was again? Uh, Suki Buchanan, ma'am. Miss Buchanan, last time we talked, you promised me you were going to take care of the people who killed my grandson. Yes, and I trusted you. And I trusted you that you did that. We but did. Unless you've got more news about those people or more information about my grandson, I don't really see we have much else to talk about. Uh, okay. Well, um, hang on. Sorry. Hit the pause button real quick. Yeah. Did we find out the, we found out the killer, right? Yeah. It was the, the evil branch of the obsidian order that we took down. Right. Right. They were the right. ones. So just as a quick aside, do you have new information about the people <laughs> who killed her boy? Cause I, I do. think you do. I do have new information. Funny. You should ask about the people who killed your boy. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're trying to kill them. You want in? Um, <laughs> please tell me that was the pitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it wasn't, but it could be. Let's see um, how much rage his grandma has, though. Yeah. Oh, so much. I'll let she's you know. She's just an ancient a werewolf. A lot. <laughs> they so were super much. sweet last time we were there. It was just our grandkids that. Kind yeah, of they were a little hot headed. Yeah. Jumped yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like the fact that like that's the level of temper they're working with, and grandma showed nothing on the outside. Still waters run deep, baby. They're always the scariest ones. Um, but yes, ma'am, we actually do. We're um we're we're fighting the very people who did this to your grandson. And I think it would be beneficial if we all just talk face to face, you know, in a civil manner and we didn't break into your house again. We're so sorry about that. I'm just like listening to all this Tiga happening. Like what? Yeah, it's like the one side. I'm, I'm yeah. like, look, I'm like looking at Gates. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're like this is way before your guys' time. Um, <laughs> uh, Suki, I want you to manipulate someone. <gasps> which, if I recall correctly, on your last level, it became an advanced move. It is. I'm very excited to try my advanced move. All Go right. ahead, Spooky Grandma. Let's get it. it. Grandma, oh, spooky grandma talking to, to is... angry werewolf grandma. We have a complete <laughs> set of grandmas. <laughs> we have finally we got, got it. <laughs> we've achieved episode. full grandma. Grandma squad. Yeah. We get grandma, to build like a grandma Gundam. Oh my yeah, god. Exactly. Please, I was like, build a mecha grandma. Jason, like, this, we just stack us all on top of on. each other. A one shot with. With Grandma Hernandez, the werewolf grandma, Rosalita, spooky grandma, and Please. sassy Savannah uh, thief magic user grandma. Please, I'm begging you. Let that be oh, my, oh my god, the golden girls of the freaking mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I love oh, this. Uh, okay. Doris Payne's definitely Rose. Uh, or no, what's the, what's the really old one? Sophia. Sophia, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so it was an eight. An eight. They'll yeah. do it, but only if you do something for them right now to show them that you mean it. Um. And if it's not enough, they'll tell you. Okay. Uh. Let's see. We got any proof? Uh. Uh. I don't think we have any, like, physical proof that we're fat and um yeah proof or some some way to convince them how about this after a moment of silence she goes so you're telling me the people or person that killed my boy is still out there running around one of them there was a sort of cabal type of deal we thought we got all of them but it turns out one of them is still kicking around and has joined forces with something way worse than what he was doing. Do you have a way of finding that person or do you know where they are? As a matter of fact, we do. We saw them just recently. When you find them, you let us know. Or better yet, you bring them here. And we'll help. 
But Mr. Buchanan, we get to kill him. We're fine with that. Don't you worry. Yeah, no, that's that's all you. Absolutely. Yeah, no, for sure. Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to tell that to my friends and try not to make that sound as deeply yeah. murder for hire as we as it and is. She says, that sounds lovely. You contact me anytime. And yes, ma'am. She so hangs much. up. I don't like. I don't know. <laughs> she's like no. Like she just like erases her brain. She, she just starts humming Macarena until yeah. you hang up. Yeah, exactly. She it's the whole music. She continues watching like Love Island. <laughs> like, yeah. That's all you hear from that. On. Just takes a really like a shot of really strong yeah. like yeah. moonshine. Just erase your brain. <laughs> she goes back to listening to Al Hurricane Junior. Um, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and that completes that call. So uh, if you can hand him over, know where he'll be or get him to somehow go to their house, they will take care of Zach the Shade Zach. for you. Well, I mean, I think that kills two birds with one stone. I think Ooh, we now we phrasing. know we have... <laughs> I know I couldn't resist. Um, kill two <laughs> stones with one wolf, yeah. Kill, kill one guy with a bunch of wolves. Um, <laughs> so many werewolves. So oh, many werewolves. Family. Okay, so real talk. Could you imagine if you lured him there, then got Chet to cut the power, and then just left him there? You'd just be torn apart. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was kind of my thought. Do it. Does it yeah. need to be a full moon or no? Oh, no. okay. Look! Look! We're look! We're hunters. Whatever. We're not superheroes. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're anti-heroes at best. <laughs> at best. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. I mean, as long as I get my sword back, I'm cool. Oh. All right. So, hunters, what's the plan? You've got some more resources, some more potential allies. It sounds like to me, you need a way to find or lure the shade someplace correct what is he and i asked this to the team what is he attracted to like what what is he looking for right now Any aside ideas? from just killing us in the general direction um yeah <laughs> yeah he does not like us but he mm. hasn't attacked on his own um wait a second uh i'll try and remember back when i was at the their their base of operation and when i saw him in that room yeah the trust there yeah. anything aside from him bandaging himself up that i would have noticed uh that would have kind of like been um, out of the way interesting that was like his gates why don't you investigate a mystery oh, <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> Is it a seven? Uh, it's, a, it's a six. Oh, oh buddy. You do you level, level up, up again? <laughs> yeah, yeah mark, ex mark experience twice how now. Much, how much luck do you have? Yeah, how much luck yeah. you got? Uh, I've used uh, only a few. I think I've used four. So I have like three more. Yeah, you got plenty. I'm going to redo it because, yeah, there we go. Well, are you using luck? Is that what's happening? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm using luck. It's a 12. Oh! You don't have to re-roll. It just comes to 12. Just um, a 10 on a dice roll. <laughs> no, listen. And we recognize that and see it. That was a very good roll. Um, you can hold two. Are you basically asking what's being concealed here? Yes. Okay, are there any other questions you want to ask along these lines? And I'll give it to you in one answer. Uh with being concealed here and like maybe what was it going to do or something i could see that yeah something like in that yeah range so as you think back i don't think that there was anything there physically as you think back that would like tip you off but as you think about his behavior and as you think about that he was beat up and that you have gotten the sense that he has maybe done some things that Maxwell didn't like or made some mistakes. 
you're pretty sure that he wants to get back into Maxwell's good graces. You think he's still working for him, but he wants to prove himself to Maxwell. And one of the easiest ways he could do that is to kill you guys, specifically Q. You think that if you were able to, you would be able to very easily, almost recklessly lure him into a trap if you would be able, if he knew that Q was there waiting for a one on one final battle for the sword. He. Because he can accomplish his goals, get back on the good graces of Maxwell, and kind of tickle that ego that he always seems to have. That's it. Uh, Q. My Money. guy. <laughs> How do you feel about being bait, essentially? Ooh. For Zach? Yeah, do you remember when we were at the place and I was trying to get out of there and then you showed up out of nowhere and you're like, hey, <laughs> but his whole like demeanor changed when he saw you and he was just like coming for you full on. And didn't he stab you? He did. Yeah, like pretty hard. How about stabbing him back? I'll be your... I just like, I like... <laughs> We just, we'll say we did this while getting my onion rings, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You're in the drive thru. We need these onion No, rings. listen, you're in the drive thru with like, didn't he stab you like a lot? And the lady's like, here's your onion yeah, rings. One large onion ring and four large sodas. Have a good Any day. A I'm How a about burger. I'm How a about burger you stab too. him back? Um, can I have some more barbecue sauce? Thanks. But then again, oh, you know yeah, what? This is Albuquerque. Sauce. They don't even flinch. <laughs> yeah, they're they're like, oh, you guys monster hunting? Yeah. yeah. No, third highest violent crime birthday. rate in the country. We're good. <laughs> I I look in the um the passenger seat mirror and directly at gates and my eyes start to burn. I'll be the bait. I'll and do that's you. where we end ah. our episode. <laughs> I will only say this one other thing. As to the question of how do you contact him, I think Chet still has his number. Or at least an old number. So noted. That is our episode for today for the Duke City Chronicles. Uh, I think we went like just a few minutes over, but I think that's all good. We're gonna call our winner right now in the live chat here on Twitch. Uh, so congratulations to our winner and you'll get us in the discord all the details are there in the chat and we'll get those dice out to you um we will be back next week same time i know we've had a little uh, spotty schedule we're working to get that going good but uh we'll see you next week friday uh 4 p.m mountain 6 p.m eastern but until then albuquerque is a weird place let's keep it that way bye